<laughs> well, for those of you who don't know how I teach, um, I always do live development. I prefer to do it live, do it with you, uh, so that when I break something, you can actually uh, not only take comfort in the fact that, yes, we all break code, uh, but two, you can see how we back out of that and fix something. Uh, and I think that's always beneficial as a learning environment. Now, let me first start off by asking the question, how many of you work with clients? I think most of you had said that. Now, how many clients never do anything wrong in the WordPress dashboard? You ever had to reset something, <laughs> uh, or uh, or how many of you have ever had this experience? You just spent three months on this project developing. You're ready to go. Uh, you turn it over to the CEO, who thinks you know he's all excited about this stuff, and you get a call on uh, like Sunday morning or something saying, um, "Something's wrong with the site. I think I did something." And you come back and it's completely messed up, broken. Guy said he didn't like a certain database table, so he deleted it because the naming was wrong. Um, so one of the things that I have found with pods after using it for a number of years is it is a wonderful tool to customize the admin area of WordPress to not confuse clients. I can't tell you how many times I've heard from people or when I used to do development for clients, they were really angry because they did not want a blog. They wanted a website. And why in the world am I supposed to write a post? That's a blog. No, I told you I wanted an article. Simple semantics is one of those things that Yes, you can educate your clients. You can say, okay, it's okay, it's a post. What this is just is a content piece that we're going to save. Try to explain to them the difference between a category and a tag. Oh, they're both taxonomies. What's a taxonomy? All I want to do is say, location of my store. Well, Pods is there to say, you know what? I can make a taxonomy that's called location. I can customize every single thing without writing large pieces of functions. The idea, and as they, uh, they were talking about earlier, uh, as they did the, the quick little introduction, when you create a new taxonomy, they, took, they were looking at uh, custom post types earlier. When you create your own taxonomy, don't just stop at the base settings. Because part of what we're going to do is some practical examples that we have seen that have helped clients. Um, the idea if you are going to have, um, you have a client, Subway, and Subway has a whole bunch of different stores and no, maybe you just want a simple little taxonomy that can be used, which we'll take a look at in just a moment, to build your own search engine. So that's the, that's the end goal of this little session, is I'm going to show you a very simple way that in pods you can create a search engine that anybody can control the results for. And using things like a taxonomy. So if we were just going to do a location of a store, locations, process this, great, so pod is not found, okay. create new, taxonomy, uh, oh, no. yeah. I, it I must have, exist because you've added pods now. It's my, it's the object cache configuration on there. <laughs> See, we offer lots of performance. Settings clear, pods cache. <laughs> yeah, that's generally what we say. Settings clear, pods cache. Okay. 
this doesn't work, we'll go to a live site. Yeah, I, I didn't double check and see if this was a uh, <laughs> All right, so we'll make this super easy by going to Is there an extra S in there? Yeah, there is. Where will we go? There. There we go. All <laughs> right. So, I put up another site just in case we ran into a problem. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the pods, to the admin area. We're going to add new, and maybe a little bit slower since we are trying to go through the Wi Fi right now. Okay, so now that we've created the location, this is a section that you really need to. To spend some time on because if you don't you're I think you'll confuse a lot of clients clients are not used to how we are used to working with WordPress we are always used to the add new post you know, edit post find the post in the trash we're used to those types of terminology but it makes it so easy to find all of these it's like localization localize it in English for the client. Uh, so rather than writing a whole localization file, that's essentially what you're doing here. You're rewriting all the terminology that exists in the back end. And pods gives you that point and click. Client calls back and says, I don't know what add new means. Add another location that you haven't added before. <laughs> Okay, so let's go save that pod. Let me show you that now it will literally tell us. Um, I haven't attached this taxonomy to anything yet, have I? So you're not going to be able to see it yet. So I'm just going to put it, add it to the posts. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone to the advanced options. We're going to come back to this in just a moment. Save this pod so that we can see locations here. So now, when we want to add new locations, and it's not going to fully show it here, so we don't have to drop down. But this add new location button, that is where I actually wanted to type my code or my modification. So let's just move this down here. Add new location. Now you will see when we go to add a post, yeah, it's a little bit long, but you get the idea that if you have any clients having problems, this is why pods is going to make it super easy. You don't have to write your filters. You don't have to run through all of WordPress, change WordPress. Um, you can simply work within this area. How many of you feel that the WordPress search out of the box is just so wonderful? Like it, it gets your results exactly how you want it to be. Um, yeah. Or how many times do you set up, let's just say take regular posts, and you tell your, or your client says in the contract, in your milestone settling that um, I want to have five different posts, five different tags. We'll have news, general updates, things that are like a, a normal company might have for different types of posts. <clears throat> and then you go back and look and you wonder, why do they now have 14? Because different people updated. One person did update. One person did updates. One person misspelled update. And now they're all in that tags list. You seen that happen before? Yes. Well, this little um, trick will hopefully help you out. 
So when you're creating your locations, and if we were to go add a new post, you'll also see on the right, um, right hand side that we now have this meta box locations because we've, this is a taxonomy, we've added on to this. What I like to do with a lot of clients is if they need a custom thing, I'm going to remove the tags. I'm going to remove the categories because I don't want them messing with all that stuff because then you might get that in a WordPress search result if they somehow find the, the old WordPress search using the Q equals search and then the tags or ta um, the taxonomies, the traditional ones, will come because it's part of the WordPress query search. Um, I want to control what they can search. So for an example, let me go to, so I'm going to show you some of the things that we do at webdesign.com. Uh, so let me log in here to my test account. So I'm going to go over here to the library. There's actually a search bar here. To control what people can search for, we're going to run a simple jQuery autocomplete, type ahead. And I'm going to show you what we can do because if they wanted, if I wanted people to search for pods and they start typing it in, rather than have them do what a lot of people do with search engine, pods running around, you know, they start doing way too much. Creating a simple search form that directs people, okay, this is something that you're looking for. So if you're looking for something to do with pods, I'm going to auto-complete some of these courses that already exist. So rather than doing tags, that type ahead jQuery, how many of you are familiar with type ahead? Um, you can feed type ahead your predefined list. Well, how, what predefined list can I control as the developer that would be really easy for the secretary or personal assistant of my client to update? Well, that is something like this. If pods is running the taxonomy, now pods can control all of the taxonomies. So it, it can create the lists. It, it, uh, it controls the list. If you've ever asked somebody who's never done JavaScript, jQuery, or any type of PHP or any type of code, go add some stuff to an array. That's, that's what type ahead and a lot of JavaScript is doing when you're pulling something in. How do you add something to an array? We need to remember that many of our clients, for those of you who are in web design, you, you know this, this joke. If you need to get into your client's website and you forgot the password, where do you go? To the assistant's computer, because it's probably on a sticky note on their monitor. <laughs> A lot of our clients are not going to be as technically savvy as we, so we have to think ahead of time. So can we use pods as a simple data entry point? Um, the idea of, okay, pods, taxonomies, I can create just a ton of them. Then those taxonomies can be linked to posts. Um, those taxonomies can be controlling what is fed to search engine or our little form field. And so what I'm going to do right now is let me zoom this in. Does PHP Storm allow me to make it larger? Yep. Presentation mode there. somewhere. Is 
is this large enough for you guys to see? Normally I make the text really large. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, in a, in a normal form uh, that you build, you're going to you know, pass in the location that you want the form to go to um, and whether it's going to be like a get. So with that form that I showed you on webdesign.com, searching through our uh, library of classes, I pass a simple a get. The form goes to a pods page. We're going to see that in just a moment. So that the result would look something like this. If I can type. search for muffins. You know, it's going to be something that you pass along that you build. So it's going to go into the URL. So using a simple way of creating like a search string variable, just simply getting what is being passed in to the search. So now I have whatever somebody typed in, and especially if I'm doing an autocomplete that is being pulled in from my taxonomy list that I have set up, I now have a variable that um, we can go get anything in pods. Now, I know Josh and a number of have also said that there's 11 million different ways to use pods. You can also do under accessibility, set to zoom in. Ah, okay. Okay. So with this, and I'm going to use a little bit more of an older school method of working with pods in PHP. So I'm not really going over into the, the pages and the templates just yet. Um, but I, I need to tell it that, hey, we're going to use some pods. Um, and this is the very old way of doing it. But the reason why I'm doing this is because this is about as low-level core base that you could even do with pods. All this is saying, hey, I'm going to use my pod webinars. So this is going back to webdesign.com. We've got a large pod that we've created that has all sorts of fields, relationship fields to different taxonomies <clears throat> that feeds in embed codes out of different you know, video hosting solutions. Um, and all I've done is said, I want to simply find a record. And I don't think many people use this anymore. But it's about as simple as we can go. And this is, unless you guys don't want me to teach them this one. <laughs> well, just fine. Fine works. I just, for me, logically, in my brain, that's what I do. I mean, you can do the find. Um, will that run off of my straight select? Not off. The, the pod object is... Uh, yeah, no, I actually X. need the find record. And it, it's deprecated, though. Right. <laughs> but it'll still <laughs> work. <laughs> um, Um, let me just put this and then we'll just, I'm going to use a, something really simple. Um, so I'm trying to read a really small print here. Okay, so I'm not going to write the, the whole code out. But if you simply get something that's in the URL, pass that into a variable, you can use that as your search string, and you can force it to only search 
in a certain taxonomy or in a certain relationship field. So rather than going through and, you know how, if you were to simply search in like a regular WordPress post, the search is gonna try and go through some of the posts, the text and everything else, but you won't control what it is people actually get in the search results. Just because I wrote in a field, text field, in my database, the word pods, I don't want it to be returned. I only want the results to be returned for what I control. And by doing that, I can then search just a certain taxonomy to get, <laughs> at the end, um, you know, we're, we're simply showing the template. Yeah. So, uh, if you had a case where you wanted to change the search based on whether someone was logged in or not, if user logged yeah. in, I mean, just we can then use a. It depends on what type of membership system you might be using, or right. whether they're just logged into WordPress, because then that's just traditional WordPress conditional logic. Right, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I, I guess where I'm going with the idea of uh, perhaps searching different pods with different types on it. You can absolutely do this. Okay. Um, now again, remember, I'm just trying to, to cowboy code here, give you little examples, kind of get you down a road that, that you can take yourself. Uh, you know, I haven't done any sanitizing of, of the, the search results. I haven't done anything like that. All, the, the big part about working with, let me go back here. Actually, let's go, and okay, let's, let's look on a live site. I'm always living dangerously. Now, what you will see is, webdesign.com was pretty much built on pods, before any custom post types, the whole pods 2 even existed. Um, so there's a lot of legacy stuff in here, there's a lot of new stuff in here. And I don't know, you know I'll just open this up and see if it'll Odds Pages is a completely different, well, let me go to this one first. And now some of this, again, deprecated. <laughs> but part of, if you understand where pods came from, I think it does help to know how you can take better advantage of pods today. Uh, because if you understand the core of pods, you can actually see how you can take better advantage. You're gonna post this and say, look at how bad his code is. The idea that, and I don't even think we use pods URL variable anymore. Uh, it's still in the, the documentation. But it's just looking for the last variable in your URL. And it's then setting that in my little variable called slug. So then, in using my webinars, I'm just saying this is my parameter I want to pull out or base my results on. And then a simple show template, which is simply using the magic tags to display whatever it is. So in, in one sense, you can URL hack webdesign.com without having to type anything. If you know the title of any of the webinars, you simply type that into the URL and you'll get the exact page uh, because it's simply pulling in the variable uh, that uh, that pods is based on. This, is, this last variable I think is so useful in building your own search engine because you can control based on what you're passing through a form, through a post or a get, you use that to extract and then do your, your regular SQL search. Um, 
And rather than relying on WordPress to search for something, you control it by your, let me go back here. And you guys aren't going to do anything on extending. Because this was the other one that. It's probably important when you touch it, touch it later. Well, this is the, the only other thing I was going to say. How many of you wish there was an easy way to um, add a Twitter handle to a user profile page? Yeah, I mean, because what is WordPress user profiles? Your profile. So I've got email, website, for those of you who remember going back a ways with WordPress, we had ICQ in there for a long time. <laughs> we had AOL in there for a long time. But this is one of the things that a lot of people ask. You know, yes, there are plugins out there that, okay, you can create a, there's a number of those custom user profile things. But if you're already using pods, and as a lot of people here have already mentioned, pods <coughs> is on every single one of my sites because if I want to extend something, add a custom post type, add a taxonomy, customize anything with WordPress, it's always going to be with pods. Just that's how it works now for me. So with pods, I can extend my user See how this was, and I know we haven't talked about it. I can extend any post type that already exists, media files. Uh, how many of you wish you could add, you know, oh, if somebody wants to add a GPS location or to a picture that they upload, or you want to add something like this picture was taken here. Rather than not just a caption, not something else, you can add additional fields to your media uploads. Um, but the user is probably one of the most useful ones. Oh, and the other thing, uh, just to put this out here, if you do posts here, even if you have another plugin that you have where your theme adds their own custom post types, but you don't feel like that's enough, you can come right here and add more to it. So like if you're using WooCommerce or any of the uh, e-commerce plugins, Exchange or something, you're like, I know most, most of those are based on a custom post type for the product. I want to add something to it. We can do it here. You can use pods to extend whatever it is. And that's why I think it's really powerful. But this user area, if we extend a user, this is the super simple solution for, let's add a Twitter account. Twitter field. And you can go through and set this. I'm just going to save this. And now we're going to go back to the user profile. And now we have, again, yeah, I have not set the, the field and shortened it and done any of the other stuff. But now we have a Twitter field that we can use, uh, get user meta on our theme or, or your template file or wherever you want to display it, any of that get user meta is now stored here. So we can pull that right out using regular WordPress functions. But what I think is even more powerful is it's still a pod. So if I'm doing things with pods like a relational field, that can be a really easy way to now put relational fields back and forth if somebody has, all right, so here's my Twitter account, but what if I want to also allow people to relate other posts that they may have co-written? Maybe they didn't, they didn't get credit for it. And so they want to go to their user profile and start listing other blog posts that they like. I mean, that could be another one. So let me go edit that pod. I don't think I have, oh, I do have a blog post. Let's 
go to the user, and we're going to add a relationship field. And it's going to go to posts. The idea would be, well, what if somebody in their user profile, you want a simple way for them to tag posts that they want to read later. And you want to store that with the user meta so that they can control which posts they, they like or they want to read later. So now I can put a relationship to the posts that are on WordPress I can even go and say multiple select, um, multi-select, because they may want to choose several things. Now again, we can pass all these things through other forms. We can pass all this stuff through a gravity form. It can be a simple um, PHP-based button that you're passing, a, you know, I like this, or I want to save this post on the front end. But this is what's going on in the back end, and I probably needed to write the name of that field first. Um, favorite posts. So update this field. Save this. And now when the user, whether you have customized the way they can edit their profile, maybe you have a front end profile editor, Again, we only have one post on this blog, blog site, website. But they could select a number of their posts that they like as, as their favorite posts. So that when on the front end of the site, when you are building a user profile display, you can now have a list of these are my favorite posts, or these are posts that I like, or these are posts, you know, a reading list. So, you know, Corey Miller, I think, loves to share his library of books that he likes to read. This could be a perfect way if he had a post type or a custom post type of all his favorite books, and then here's the ones he's reading right now, he can control that from his user profile. And maybe we have an iThemes website of all of our books, and every user on the site can have a checkbox for these are my books that I've written. The idea that extending the user profile is as easy as adding fields. Um, and then, all because it's all stored in the user meta, it's, it's the simple get user meta, whatever the field name is. And on the front end, that's when you need the front end developer uh, to make it look good. Are you guys going to touch on the settings API? Uh, well, the full clock on is probably going to be lots of just okay. the rest of the stuff. Let me just ask a quick question. Are there any questions about what we briefly I don't know if this applies directly to this, but if you already have um, a meta key, is there a way to attach pods to it? Let's say you brought pods into an art, like an old WordPress cell, and uh -huh. already had meta keys associated with like um, posts. Is there a way to attach pods so you can take advantage of like you know the pod functions? So is it? Are you asking like can we import an old? Let's say you're or an having, existing. You already have an existing cell WordPress that already has meta keys associated with posts, and then you install pods. Is there any way to you know, uh, there's probably a number of ways. This, I think, is one of the easier ways. And again, it comes back to, as Josh was saying, it's so powerful, the relation, relational stuff. Because, and again, you may need to do this. This catches people a lot. Make sure you have advanced relationships enabled. Otherwise, you won't be able to do what I may be breaking the site trying to do. So let's say you have an existing meta key or something. And can I pull it out? Well, if you just add the field of the same name, 
it'll just continue. It'll just continue. It won't delete your data even if you delete the field or add the field or change the field name. Yes. Well, it, oh, will, it will change your field name if you added the tape. If you add a field of the same name as a, as a meta key and then you change the name, it will rename it. But when you add a field or delete a field, it won't. I understand what you're asking about now. You're asking about if you're currently doing this type of thing. You know, the yeah. the old way of doing this. Yeah, that great pods and I don't want to take it the pods, but use the same meta key. That's the key name. If you just take this one, or whatever key name you're using, if that's what you're currently having, bring that over into whatever type of field and make sure that's the, the key. So if currency step, underscore step, is your currently existing meta key, when we go and add or edit your pod here, and we, oops. Yes, that's it. That wouldn't work. <laughs> so then we come down here to our fields, we add the field, and in the name, we use the currency step. It'll just continue on from this point. Now you're using something in a meta box rather than using something in the custom field box, meta box. Um, and everything will be in that more field meta box. Um, and it's one of those ones that at that point you just want to hide the custom fields so you're not having two at the same time. So if you put a bunch of fields that were done with ACF. Yeah, it's because that's what pods is. This naming, the ID name is going to be across the board. It's, it's a meta key name. The only difference is the way that ACF stores its relationship field data. It's not the same way that pod stores it because pod stores it in such a way that there is a row individually for every meta value for every lit item. But in, I think ACF, uh, the last one I checked, I think it stores it all in one meta key. Value. Yes, so, it uses a serialized direct. Yeah, it's used, it, we do that too, but it, we do it only for ordering. The actual values, when you do like a meta query, all that stuff, is still going to be able to do, like, still do that uh, value check. So it, it, we store them in three, like let's say you have three uh, blended items that you're related to on the item. It stores color yellow, black, and green, and then we also store an extra meta key, which has the order that you selected them for. Uh, and then in the case of uh, like files, Specifically, in what order you upload them in. But with a plain text field, because it's just a meta value, and by default WordPress is or pods storing it post meta or user user meta, mm -hmm. you could just re basically reverse engineer your existing setup using the pods editor. Okay. Yeah, I was using these three keys, so I'll just create a new pod with those three fields, and then it'll take over from there. Okay. Do you have any recommendations on how to deal with multi uh, dimensional arrays and storing metadata? Model not only ACF, but I mean, like almost every uh, meta framework that exists that uses a repeatable field, a clonable field, they all sort in multi dimensional arrays. So I just, I had to write my PhD uh, thing to, to deal with it, but do you have any recommendations? Yeah, so not much as a recommendation, as I mean, the problem ends up being, maybe some of you may not be aware, but we're in the metadata team, we're working on a uh, standardization of how we're going to store data return field types, a lot of stuff, setting up a new API to register fields to show up in the admin area, just like register post type would be, so you register post field or whatever. And uh, it will show a form field in the admin area. Uh, but the, the idea is we're trying to standardize all of this stuff because, like you said, all these different plugins are doing different things because there's the right way. Um, and the problem ends up being that you, know, you can't just flip between plugins. You can't just turn on ACF and then say, okay, I'm done. Turn on pods and then, okay, I'm done with types. You can't just, you don't see your stuff there. Um, so that's that's the idea we're trying to do with the standardization process, at least for the data side. Um, but it would be great if, if more of the plugins would just sort of use that standard as soon as it's released um, so that we don't have that sort of issue. But a big chunk of the work that we went into pods 3.0 were specifically the loop fields that we're working on, is deciding how are we going to store all this stuff? How can we make it so that we still query against things properly? How are we going to handle tables? Like when you have a table based problem like an advanced common type, how are we going to do fields for those? Um, so there's a lot of questions we tackle. We have those get um, issues. Um, I don't recall exactly what we did for every single case, but um, that's certainly something that could be very tricky. Like you said, I guess I'm just reiterating. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. There's, there's no one, one answer. It's just no. C 
see how the data is formatted and see how the plugin works. What plugin was it? How was the format it's storing it in currently? Does it have multiple formats from maybe a previous version? Um, how do you get it out? You just gotta do the, the rough stuff. So it's all of a sudden you're going to change your version 5.0? Sorry, TCM. Yeah, it could change. Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 us as a plugin with pods, we did change in between 1.x and 2.x, and we're continuously trying to improve our stuff. So we may have a, a change coming up soon, but it's um, it's an optimization thing for the pod development uh, relationship table. It's optional, and what we're going to be doing is we're switching everything from IDs into keys. So instead of storing the pod IDs and field IDs for the relationships, we're going to be storing the pod names and field names. So that when you register your code, um, base pods, like you register your field uh, with pods register field or pod register pod, you can then take advantage of relationships because currently you can't do that because we require IDs for everything. And that was just a limitation of storing all of our stuff in posts and they all had post IDs. So, um, yeah, it's certainly something we're always aware of with upgrades is we want to make it as seamless as possible. And if, if you don't upgrade, like we, what we did in pods 1.x and 2.x, if you upgraded your site, your site wouldn't break. It just would miss a content. So once you ran the upgrade, it would have all the content. But you can always downgrade to 1.x and you're fine. Uh, that's, that'll be the same case here, except in this case, an upgrade won't be required, it'll be uh, recommended. Um, and in the future, if pods 4.0 or something like that will actually make it uh, more of a required upgrade. But uh, for optimization purposes, we try to consider making things as little impact as possible from version to version. But, uh, that's why we're paying so much attention to the fields right now. We want to make sure we get it right, because if we don't get it right the first time, we're going to have to run an upgrade, and no one wants to deal with that. Like there's a lot of users that will have problems with it. There will be a lot of problems with people who won't be able to finish the upgrade script. There will be a lot of problems with just all sorts of issues that are all stemming away from that. So that's why Pod 2.0 is now right now. Obviously, we want to make sure that it's as good as possible so we have to we avoid the headaches that you would incur. Any One of the final things just to touch on. And I think one or two of you actually mentioned this, that you are you were used to writing all your custom post types yourself. But how many of you remember every single option that comes with a, creating a custom post type? I mean, I remember for a while we just, you, you kind of had a template. Okay, this was the template. I'm going to paste this in there and then remove things I don't need anymore. And then along came uh, the, the generators. Oh, I would go to one of these custom post type generators, fill in all the forms. You know, it helped me remember all the fields that I could use if I wanted to use them. Generate WP. Yeah. Yeah, if you had if you do not know about generatewp.com, that should be definitely on one of your favorite lists because if you need to generate any type of code for any of the functions you might write for WordPress. Everything from just a simple basic creating a sidebar to creating a navigation system outside of WordPress. It, it's all right there. Um, and it's a simple point and click, step, step, step through all of the steps. But this was, I think, an answer to a lot of people with pods because all of the options are before me. I can fill them out if I want to. In creating a custom post type. The idea, as we were talking about, well, how do I associate one custom post type under another post type, give you know, the hierarchy of parent post type to another post type, not just a custom post type? Well, here it is. Put the parent menu ID there, and now that is now sitting underneath the other custom post type. Changing the menu name, changing the position where it would be, all these type of things, adding an icon, that you want to do. Clients love icon. You can't believe <laughs> simply by adding ooh, a color icon here. It just makes their day. Um, maybe I've just had some really strange clients in the yeah. past. <laughs> um, Is there a human like <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But going through this, this allows me to say, is it hierarchy? Um, is, does it rewrite? What does it rewrite for this? Can it be in the searches? Can it can it be query? 
um, when it, when somebody presses save, what's what's the the default? Is it going to go to draft? Is it going to go to publish? What what's going to happen with this post? The idea of WordPress provides the framework for all post types. How many of you have been around since or for seven years in the WordPress world? If you remember a little math, quitting CNET. Side note fact that you know, I actually met Matt when he worked at CNET. I was a video game developer before, and so we were bringing some of our games for CNET to review. And so Matt was just like a senior writer or something, a reviewer. And well, WordPress only had posts. There, there was no pages. There was no navigation. It was posts. So everything is a post. And so as we extended out WordPress, it all extended out from posts. So when we create a custom post type, we have the options right here of things that a traditional WordPress post supports. And we can take and leave anything from there. So if you do not want the title or the editor, fine, get rid of it. And all you will see left there is your more fields. You won't see any other part when you create a custom post type. So if you don't want the traditional WordPress stuff in there, you can make this anything you want. And I think that's the benefit, one of the huge benefits of pods is every one of our clients are gonna be different. They may need different interfaces. I mean, that's the other great thing about a pods gravity form interaction. I had one client I did not want at all in the back end of WordPress. Even if I gave them just a, an author thing, it would just, even a lower permission level, they would still find a way to break WordPress. So you know what I did? Oh, if they want to edit something or they want to add a post, they went and filled out a gravity form that sat on a password protected page. That gravity form populated into the different locations that needed to be done. So your, your clients are going to be very different. You may have to serve their purposes and change the way WordPress works. But with this, you can choose what, what they can use, what type of taxonomies that will be affiliated with this. And this right here is a, is a great solution <laughs> that as we wrap it up, that's what it said, <laughs> you never have to have a bookmark for how do I create a custom post type anymore. Because with pods, Simply click Add New. And all your options are there to change, set, customize, however you want. Move, location, hide things. And we didn't even talk about certain things. There's like permissions on, well, only the admin can actually view this custom post type. What a perfect way to hide the editor or the add-on for taxonomies from anybody but the administrator so therefore your editors can't add new taxonomies can't add new things to this. All they can do is maybe have a checkbox from the post creation screen. Um, so using practical examples, I think pods is your must install because it's, it's your rapid development environment. So you don't have to sit there and copy paste your code, which most of us are used to doing. We've got all our snippets. Pods eliminates the need for the snippet. How many times have you copied and pasted a snippet that had some other word or definition in there that my company is not named Bob's Muffins. <laughs> my company is because oops, I copied and pasted. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to come up afterwards, or you can catch me at uh, work camp tomorrow.